I'm back where it all started for me in my poker journey at my home poker room here in Chandler, Arizona, Gila River Resorts and Casinos, Lone View. I'm excited to get in there and play some cash games. I'm either gonna jump in the one, two or the two, three game. I'm gonna see what the buy-ins are and if there's a wait, but we're gonna get in there and play some good hands for the vlog and hopefully win some money on this trip. All right, I'll see you guys inside. It's amazing to be back on my old stomping grounds, back where it all started at Gila River Lone Butte Resorts and Casinos, and I'm here to play the 2-3 1,000 max buy-in cash game, and they had a seat open, so let's jump into some hands. At this table, I'm playing against a few friends and familiar faces. There's a lot of straddling going on both on the button and under the gun, and in this hand, my friend Gary straddles under the gun to $6. My friend Tony, who wants to be called Tony the Fish in this vlog, he raises to $20. I don't know a ton about Tony's game other than that he's very aggressive, loves to play a lot of pots, and opens very wide. It folds around to me, and I look down at ace nine of clubs. While it can certainly flat in this spot, I think three betting and isolating Tony would be the best play. Our hand is good, but not great. We have blockers to strong hands, and we'll have position. I don't need to raise too big, being in position, and this pot is already inflated enough having the straddle, so I make it $60. Tony makes the call, so we're gonna go heads up to a flop of jack, 10, seven with one club. He checks it over to me. This board is kind of neutral for both ranges and it's somewhat dynamic. So this is not a board that we're gonna be down betting with our entire range. As you can see on this flop, we wanna do about 30% of checking with our range and the other portion is split between betting small and betting about half pot. And with our exact hand, ace nine of clubs, it wants to be checking about 63% of the time and betting 50% about 26% of the time. We can pick up a lot of equity on certain turn cards or just turn a pair of aces. So in this case, I decide to check and see if we can improve on the turn. However, the turn is an offsuit queen, so we don't improve. He checks again. I know Tony's gonna have a very wide range. We have one of our worst ace highs at this point. Because of Tony's wide range, even though our hand wants to check about 70% of the time and bet about half pot the other percentage, I think we can get Tony the fish to fold a lot of hands. So I decide to start betting and put out a bet of $50, planning to bomb the river. Tony doesn't think very long before showing us a seven and then putting in the fold, so he did give us credit for our strong hand and lets his pair go and we win with ace high. In hand number two, we pick up pocket threes. Gary raises an early position to $15. I flat in the small blind and the big blind comes along as well. So we are going three ways to a flop of queen, jack, five with two clubs. I check. The big blind checks and Gary checks as well. So now we're headed to a turn card, which is bingo a three. So now we have a very sneaky bottom set. I unblock all club draws, all straight draws and all pairs my opponents can have like a queen, jack or five. So I think this is a great reason to put in a bet and I make it $20. Both of my opponents must have whiffed this board pretty bad because they both fold, but we do take down the pot. In this hand, there's a button straddle to $6 and Gary raises the small blind to $20. There's one caller before me and then I look down at King Jack offsuit. This is probably a fold. Actually, I'm not quite sure how to play with these straddled pots and having a player raise from the small blind, but I call. The player to my left calls. So we're going four ways to a flop of Queen Jack 6 Rainbow. Gary leads out for $20. The player to my right folds, and now I'm not gonna fold just yet with my pair of jacks, so I make the call. The other player to my left calls as well, so we're going four ways to a turn, which is a seven of diamonds. This time it checks all the way through. The river's an offsuit king, and Gary leads for $45. And now it's on me. So my hand has now upgraded to two pair. While Gary can certainly have a hand like king queen, I think the most likely hand he's going to value bet this river with is a hand like ace king because this line would make sense. I don't think Gary ever has a hand like ace 10 in this spot because I don't think he plays it this way. So I wanna raise for value with my two pair and I make it $110. Gary picks up his cards, chuckles a little bit and then puts in the fold. So we scoop a very nice pot. We started out with a thousand and now we are up to $1,200. In this hand, Tony the fish straddles under the gun to $6. 
gentleman to my right calls, and then I look down at Ace King Offsu. I'm gonna raise it up and make it $30. However, I think maybe I could have gone slightly bigger, maybe around 35 to 40. But nevertheless, both players call, so we're going three ways to a flop of eight, seven deuce with all clubs, so this board couldn't be worse for us. Tony the fish checks, my right then puts out a bet of $25. It's important to not overplay hands like this. We don't have a club in our hand and we're just drawing to an ace or a king and we do not have clean outs because if the ace of clubs come and we make a pair, well, the board has four to a flush. So it's just important to remember hands like this are just a fold and let's move on to the next one. In this hand, Gary straddles the button to $6, folds around to me, and I look down at king three of hearts. I guess we're gonna peel because I threw in the six bucks. Player to my left then makes it $20. The cutoff calls and Gary calls on the button. Now it's on me. Well, we've come too far to fold now, so we're going a four ways to a flop of ace, 10, three. The flop and the turn check around and we head to a river card, which is the king of diamonds. So now we have two pair. I lead for $40 and my, all my opponents didn't have much at all because they tossed their hands quickly into the muck and we win this pot getting lucky with king three of hearts. In this hand, we find ourselves in a very interesting spot where there's a button straddled to $6. I'm next to act in the small blind, so I'm gonna raise it up and make it $22. Player to my left calls, middle position calls, cutoff calls, and the button calls. So we're going five ways to a flop of queen, eight, six with two clubs. I can see merit to checking or betting here. If we bet, we can try to thin the field. However, there's a lot of draws out here that my opponents can have. So I'm not sure if betting serves a ton of purpose. However, we did flop a very strong hand with top pair king kicker. The other side of the coin is if we check, we can go into check call mode, keep the pot manageable. Plus, if my opponents have draws, they're not folding to any bet anyway. But I did decide to bet and put out an amount of $45. I get three callers, so now we are going four ways to a turn card, which is the Jack of Diamonds. Now I think this is a good card to go into check call mode. There's a double flush draw, straight draws, and potential straight already out on the board. So I check, the player to my left checks, and now Gary in the hijack decides to bet $65. The button calls and now it's on me. Our hand is too strong to fold at this point. However, we can also now be losing to a hand like Queen Jack, but I think it's a little too tight to put in the fold at this point. We can have a lot of players in this pot with a lot of draws. So I put in the call and then the player to my left also calls. So now we are going four ways to a river card, which is the five of clubs. And that is probably one of the worst cards we can see as with four players in, it's highly likely one of my opponents has a flush. So now I check, the player to my left checks, and now Gary puts out a bet of $150. The button folds and now it's on me. If it was just me and Gary in the pot, I know he's capable of bluffing, so I definitely would have considered putting in a call here. However, I have to worry about the player on my left, and this is where multi-way pots become super difficult at times. At this point, with this type of run out and my exact hand, I have to put in the fold. If I somehow had a hand like king queen offsuit with a king of club, then I could definitely consider putting in a call. But again, worrying about the player to my left, I put in the fold. The opponent to my left snap calls and he had seven nine of diamonds. So he turned a flush draw, binked a straight on the river. And it turns out Gary was semi bluffing with a pair of eights. So I was right about my read on Gary. However, because the player to my left was still in the pot, we ended up making the right fold. In this hand, there's a $6 straddle and a couple limps. I look down at pocket queens and I raise to $30. I pick up two callers, so we go three ways to a flop of ace, king, jack, rainbow. A lovely flop for my pocket queens, wouldn't you say? <sighs> so the flop checks around and then the turn is the three of diamonds. And now the player to my right bets $25. I'm not gonna go anywhere just yet and our hand can improve. So I make the call and the other player folds. The river is the king of diamonds and now my opponent checks. If we put out a bet here, I think we can only get called by exactly a jack or a hand that has this beat. So I put in the check as well and my opponent shows jack 10 offsuit and we scoop the pot with our pocket queens even with the dreaded over cards on the board. In this hand, Gary puts on the $6 straddle on the button and Tony the fish raises it up from the small blind. The player to my right calls. I look down at six eight of spades. I wanna play a hand. I make the call. The player to my left calls and Gary calls. So we are going Texas heads up to nine eight eight with one spade. So we flop ourselves trips. Now I'm hoping that Tony the fish has an over pair, although unlikely, but possible. The flop checks around and now the turn is the four of spades. So I pick up a spade flush draw. It checks over to me. Can't let this one check through. And 
and we have so much equity, I bet $30. The player to my right thinks for a while it looks like he's gonna grab raising chips, and then he decides to call. The river does not improve our hand, it is an offsuit 5, and now my opponent checks to me. Because of my opponent's tells on the turn, I have a feeling that my hand isn't good. I do have trips, but I am losing to some hands, I'm losing to all better 8x combinations and straights, so I decide to check, and sure enough, my opponent has 10-8 offsuit, so unfortunately we lose this one with our trips, but we save a little value on the river. In this hand, we're a bit short-handed, and there's a button straddle to $6. I raise to $20, and the player to my left and the button calls, so we're going three ways to a flop of king, eight, nine, rainbow. Even though I block the strongest hands my opponents can have, like a pair of kings or a pair of nines, my opponents can still have a ton of draws on this board, like queen jack, queen 10, hands like 10, nine, there's a lot that my opponents can call. So I put out a bet of $20. Both players call, and now the turn is an offsuit 10. We have two pair, but now our hand is very vulnerable, and the problem with this card is there is a lot of really bad river cards we don't want to see. And being out of position, I'm going to go into check call mode. So I check it over, and the player to my left bets $45. I'm not loving it, but I still have two pair, so I make the call, and the river is one of those cards we don't want to see. It is a queen. So now I check, praying that my opponent checks back and we can get to showdown. So I check, and sure enough, my opponent checks back, and we flip over our hand, and luckily for us, it's good, and we take down the pot. All right, a little mid-session update. Kind of lost some unfortunate pots. Haven't won a really big one, but we're just slow and steady right now. I'm hovering about even, so let's see if we can win a big pot before we wrap this session up, but at least we got a few interesting hands for the vlog. All right, let's go back in and see if we can end this on a good note. In this hand, there's a limp under the gun, and then Gary raises to $15. I make the call in the big blind with king, jack of spades, and the limper comes along as well, so we go three ways to a flop of king, king, eight, rainbow, and so we flop trips. It checks over to Gary, and he bets $20. I make the call, and the player to my left folds. The turn is a jack, so now we have upgraded to the absolute stone nuts. We have kings full of jacks. I checked it over to Gary, and he checks behind. I'm not sure what the river was, but I have to put out a bet. I don't want it to check through, so I bet $20. Gary quickly folds, but there is high hand going on right now. So whoever makes the highest hand every 15 minutes gets a $250 bonus. So now I am leading with about four minutes left on this high hand, and this is a sweat for an extra $250 on the session. Can we hit it? So it was a sweat down to the final seconds, and sure enough, my kings full of jacks held for the $250 high hand bonus, so the floor brought me over an extra 250 bucks. After that hand, I played one final hand where Tony raised to $15 and I 3-bet with pocket aces to 50. He folded and we took down the pot and it's time to wrap this session up. So I was in the game for $1,000. I cashed out with $13.53 for a nice profit of $353. Okay guys, I have to invite you out to Kentucky to Triple Barrel Social where I'm gonna be doing a meetup game with Kyle Fischl and Greg Goes All In. I am so stoked. It's going to be March 3rd. We're gonna be there for a few days vlogging, doing some meetup games. So come out for an amazing time. Check out this brand new poker room and be a part of the grand opening. I'll see you guys there. All right, it's been so amazing being home, seeing all my friends, including one of my best ones, Diana, aka Aces and Hops. How'd your session go today? It was brutal. Full house beat by uh, quad nine, so no. that was that. Was that. <laughs> it was nice to be back at my home casino, play some cards, see some familiar faces, and yeah, I had a blast, and thanks so much, you guys, for following along. If you guys enjoyed the vlog, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We are just getting started, and it's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.